Alright, uh, hello everybody, this is uh, Inside the Team Room. Um, this is going to be the first time in the series that we've discussed uh, and talked to members of the intelligence community. So, uh, in this series we're going to discuss a lot of intelligence topics, life as intelligence professionals, etc, etc. So, uh, to start it out, we've got Danielle, we've got Sam, I'm T.O., and this is Jason. I'm Jason, uh, six years in the Central Intelligence Agency as a Staff Operations Officer, 12 years as a United States Marine. Uh, I'm T.O. I, uh, I spent some time in the Army uh, doing psychological operations, human intelligence collection, and uh, general analysis. Uh, then I spent some time as a civilian in East Asia. Sam, I'm a retired CIA case officer. Before that, I was an Army officer for a while. I'm Danielle. I was a counterintelligence officer for DIA, worked with the Army specifically, and was an instructor for four years. So Jason, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you did, uh, I guess, in either element of your government service, uh, Marine Corps or Andy or as a Sioux? Gotcha. So for me, it's getting into the uh, Marine Corps part of it. I'd always wanted to do it since I was a little kid. When I was young, I think I was like six or so, I announced to my parents that I liked, I was going to be a Marine, that I liked the Oakland Raiders, and I liked the Michigan Wolverines. I'm sorry. Yeah. You can get out now. Let's go. <laughs> Listen, don't be. So, uh, and yeah, I picked them for their helmets, whatever. I stuck with it. I'm not a quitter. You mean uh, Marines? All three. <laughs> all three. All right. No, I like the Marines for their crayons. Okay. Their uh, choice taste. of crayons, their yes. Taste. So, uh, you know, I joined the Marine Corps after high school and uh, did my thing there. I was medically retired after 12 years. Then after that, I worked uh, for a Nuclear Regulatory Commission on a uh, response team. While I was there, I was going to college, blah, blah, blah. Had a cousin approach me in Hawaii to talk, worked for the uh, State Department actually, um, and he kind of directed me in the direction of the agency, revealed who he was, you know, who he really was and what he did. He exposed and, himself. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. um, he's now in jail. I'm just kidding. Um, and uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so I started the process, and uh, it actually took me three years to get on board because of travel and all that stuff. So, uh, well, that sounds about right, actually. Yeah. The whole process. Yeah. Yeah, three years. So. I'm a CIA reject. I don't know if you knew that. It's like a badge of honor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm proud. And they're like, now you wore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I joined the agency, it was all still hard copy and paper. Yeah, and they computerized know. everything. Yeah. It takes just as long, but now it's all electronic. Yeah. Didn't speed up anything. Jesus. Okay. How long did it take you? Did you know you wanted to do that? Or? So, you know, I got out of the Army and actually by that point I had become a JAG officer. I, oh, just started okay. out, I just started out as a tanker, became a JAG officer, got out, was practicing law, basically to pay the bills, right? Figuring out what you're doing. And uh, this is, you know, I ran across literally a hard copy job listing for the director of operations. And this will sound totally goofy, but I read it and I thought, that's the answer to what I want to do. It's not goofy. As silly and naive as that sounds. That's exactly the way. I think you know. I think from any real perspective, any of the shit we do at this end of the spectrum sounds silly. Like, it, yeah, in practice. You know, I mean, like shit. If you were a seventeen-year-old kid and you wanted to go be a, an interrogator in the army, and you said that, like, you know, I really, I enjoy asking people questions. Sometimes they're tied up. You know, like, I mean, any of the shit sounds really hokey, but we're still talking about the army, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No, we're talking about last night. Right? <laughs> yes. That was my smooth. <laughs> You know, I mean, so when I joined, uh, I went into side I knew exactly what I wanted to do. This was like, you know, the internet was a thing, but you didn't really use it for shit. And so I was going to the library and, like, checking out fucking books and going through the card catalogs and, like, looking in the bibliography of other books. And uh, I knew some dudes that had come back from Desert Storm that had worked in PSYOP. And um, it was just fascinating to me because I was already had been to college a bit and was doing, like, anthropology and archaeology and shit like that. So... For me to be able to like that, there was a fucking job somewhere that they were gonna pay you to understand people and then yeah. fuck with them. Like it's like that's a paycheck. You get paid like I mean I didn't get much of a paycheck. I joined as an E one, but um, and so that was fascinating to me. But that even that like the hokiness of that like uh, oh oh you're trying you know tell my family. Also, completely consequentially, I joined on April Fool's Day, so not a single person in my family believed that I had joined the military. <laughs> Uh, so I, I joined on April 1st and I shipped, uh, I went back to MEPS and shipped on the 2nd of June. 
And like I'm packing my shit, moving out of my apartment, like shutting my lease down, putting stuff in storage, and my mom was like, What are you doing? It's, like, it's a hell of a joke. Yeah, like, what are you doing? And I was like, I wasn't kidding, what am I doing? Mom. Like, I'm fucking shipping out, man. And she was like, Whoa, whoa. How old were you? Uh, that was 98, so I was probably 23, 22, 23. Okay. I I mean, I had already lived overseas in like three different countries by that time, uh, of my own accord. Like I, I, I moved out like right after high school. Lived in Germany for a while. Um, you know, lived in the UK. Went to college in the UK to two different schools because I kept going fucking broke, and I'd have to come back. And when I went broke the second time, is when it was like, yeah, I guess it's time to do this. You know, because I'd already decided I was gonna. So the route that I originally wanted to go was I wanted to get my degree done. You know, check that box because I wanted to do archaeology since I was a kid. It's like, yeah, get my fucking degree in archaeology, and then like, and then join and, and you know become a part of this process. And uh, it's just shit ended up. It ended up becoming like a fucking yard sale of of, of shit being mistimed and like weird options. Cause it's like I went to school here a bit and then I came back. Yeah, but and the timing. Like army it turned like, out to be what it needed to be. You know, I, I'm a big and, and I, I want to say that my time in Japan really helped me nail this home. But like, I, I'm. I really, I really subscribe to just like you're getting the shit or whatever that you're supposed to get. Like whatever obstacles you get. I'm not saying there's like a god or a higher power and shit like that, but like you were given your your you're given your fucking like operations order every day. Whatever the obstacles are, whatever the shit is you're trying to include. And you know for me, cause like I, I went even even when I went back to high school uh, to my high school class reunion, I missed my tenth reunion because I was outside the country and I caught my twentieth. And people were all like, dude, I thought you were going to be like this archaeologist. Like, how did you not succeed in that? And it's like, well, I guess eventually I just figured out that like me imposing this abstract desire on my fucking life was just moot. Like I was given all these fucking options and obstacles and opportunities. Right. And to not start to engage those in a productive manner. And, and I mean, honestly, you know, fast forward into six hours from now in this conversation, I think me having been a fucking intelligence professional, uh, as a civilian that had zero auspice, or or as a guy in uniform that's learning the FMs and the doctrine, like my ability to respond quickly and appropriately to a variety of, of good and evil bad shit happening. I mean, at this point, it's, 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 it's